All right, in this video, we will do our first steps for interacting with objects by understanding how the MRTK uses enums to represent button states. So let's get started. The first thing we should do is getting the examples because they help us a lot in understanding how the MRTK kind of works. And yeah, they are just like really good to see because um, then we don't have only cubes and um, spheres and stuff like this. So let's go to assets and then import package, custom package. And in here, uh, I have it on here, my downloads. And here we have the Holo Toolkit, Unity, examples, and we open it. Uh, that's the same um, download link where you find the MRTK itself as well. All right, I see you when I'm done importing. After importing, we'll have this new folder, Holo Toolkit Examples, and let's actually check it out. So we go in here, and then you know, there's a lot of stuff. So I would definitely recommend you to check out pretty much all of those examples if you've got the time. If not, then I will show you the most important ones for now, the UX. And here with the scenes, and here there's also a lot of examples, but we want to go to the interactable object example right here. So let's double click. And then we can watch a lot of cool things over here. So let me actually zoom in. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, I'm now playing around with some of those objects we have over here. So if I hover over it, it turns blue. If I um, select it, it gets pink. And yeah, same for the others. And of course, it's a lot better for you to try out than just watching the video over here. Um, but yeah, you can do lots of things here. And that's pretty a pretty good demo. So you see all the states, which we are going to talk about in a second. If we now go to one of those buttons over here, I mean, there are a lot of them, and we see a common pattern. So they all have this compound button. And if we take a closer look, there is a button state. And let's now check out what that means. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six different states. So here you can see how the button states change um, depending on if I hover over the button or if I don't, or if I have my hand raised or not. And of course, if I'm pressing the button, those are all the different states which are provided by the MRTK. And of course, in the end of this short clip, I'm going to give you a short definition, um, of course, according to the documentation, uh, so you can have the most value for the states. On the press state, the cursor has to be on the object and you have to make an air tap gesture. On the targeted state, the cursor has to be on the object and you need to have your hand open and ready. On the interactive state, the cursor has not to be on the object, but your hand has to be a ready gesture. On the observation and targeted state, the cursor has to be on the object, but the hand has not to be raised. On the observation only state, the cursor has not to be on the object and the hand has not to be raised. So pretty much nothing. <laughs> And the last one is the disabled state. So you can just go here and go disabled and yeah, the button doesn't work anymore. For now, we just have been talking about the compound button. So the base class, but we see here that there are a lot of other buttons. So there's a compound button mesh, a compound button sounds, icon, text, speech, and so on. And the cool thing about the toolkit here is that they are pretty a modular system. So basically you can drag and drop all of those components here and kind of create your own button, which is pretty cool. If we now open one of those buttons over here, yours might look different. So um, there's a custom editor, which we can toggle. So yours might look like this. Um, it's exactly the same. Let me just um, make this, remove this one over here real quick. Um, it looks kind of confusing, to be honest. Um, it looks really unfamiliar because it totally doesn't look like Unity, um, but that's no problem. So this is just a custom editor, so no no fancy thing. You can just turn it off and you have the pretty normal um, editor again. Um, I don't know, maybe they liked it to do something like this. There's even a toggle help, so we can, where you can have all those kind of things in. I have to be honest, I personally don't like it, but um, if you like it, then feel free. You can also expand and collapse sections. Um, maybe it makes more sense here, um, which also looks kind of like fancy, but... Um, for me, I just personally just turned off and I have my plain old Unity Inspector. So just um, that you're not confused by seeing all those weird purple things and what's going on in here. Um, it can be kind of intimidating. 
And also what this one here is. So this here is a scriptable object and we have profiles. And even there's a, what is a profile section over here? You can just read it through if you don't know it. But also this is going to be topic for the next videos, um, how to work with scriptable objects. As we can see here, there's also a custom editor, which for some reason makes them pink. You can just turn it off again. And now we can see um, all the different profiles for all the different compound buttons. But again, this is going to be a topic for the next two videos. Again, try out the demos definitely and see how you can work with the button states. Try to make some buttons, try to change some things over here. So just trying them out. And then as always, I see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you got some value out of it, please leave a like and subscribe. If you got any questions, then leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I see you in the next one.